good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. confessions over you. Boldness, boldness, boldness. I confess boldness over each and every person here. You are bold as a lion. You are harmless as a dove. You are wise as a serpent. Hallelujah. I, can't, I claim boldness for you. Um, boldness to step out in the things of the spirit. Temp timidity and fear be far from you. Amen. That you would have boldness to step out in authority in the things of the spirit. That you will pray confidently. That you will confidently hear and receive things 
from the Spirit of God in prayer and step out on that and believe it and receive it. Let's pray. Father God, in the most powerful name in the universe, in the name that heals, the name that cleanses, the name that causes demons to flee, in the name of Jesus. I pray for the ones you have chosen here for First Baptist, the bold ones, the faithful ones. Lord, I ask you to bless them physically, heal every organ, muscle, tissue, joint, every fiber in their bodies. Your word says you will restore health to them. I, bless, I pray that you bless their finances, bless their affairs, bless their jobs, bless their businesses, bless their careers, bless their children and their grandchildren. Protect them. Let your angels encamp around about them and keep them everywhere they go in everything they do in all of their ways. Bear them up in your hands, Lord and that they won't dash their foot against a the stone. These are your people. Strengthen every marriage in this church, outside of this church. Say that I bind you. I bind all your tactics, your schemes, your plots, and your plans against the marriages and the people of God in this church. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when has a possible ever stopped you? Sunday's disappointment, is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has a possible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Do it. 
I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. One, and I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm.
Lord a hand clap this evening. Wow, you guys are singing good tonight. Hallelujah. You came ready. Amen. Ready to worship the King. Amen. Can you guys believe it's already Wednesday night? It's been a quick week, hasn't it? Pastor Danny, we are going to hate for you to leave. You want to stay? I mean, we got Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I got an extra mint. Oh, Rick's got an extra mint for you. Oh. We got an extra really guitar, throw, too. too. We got an extra guitar for him, too. Yeah. Yeah. We could even get yeah. him a guitar. Yeah. 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 We have an extra uh-huh. guitar, Pastor Danny. <laughs> He said he'd even get you some pedals. I've got. Well, Michelle offered his pedals. I've got three tonight. I wanted to be a blessing to the people. <laughs> I've got three tonight. You can just pick one. And I've heard the propaganda I've heard the lies they whispered to my soul That I have been forsaken And I'll always be forgotten No matter what I do, it's not enough But then I heard the voice as it opened up the heavens, reminding me of who I've always been. And I am your beloved, you have bought me with your blood, and on your hand you've written out my name. I My father's eyes They don't see my sin They only see redemption This is how my heart has been defined I can hear a voice That is louder than the thunder Reminding me of who I've always
come to you. Lord, we want to open our hearts, Lord, to you, because Lord, you are who we live for. And Lord, speak to us through these songs today. Lord, open our ears that we may hear what Brother Danny has to say. Lord, you are the one. In Jesus' name. Turning over tables and calling for return to our lives upon the altar, the things we did at first. You're clearing out the temple, you're cleaning out the dirt, for we are your territory, Lord, we are your church.
So we re-surrender your calling. We're coming, not walking, we're running. God, we need re-surrender. So we re-surrender your calling. We're coming, not walking, we're running. God, we need re-surrender. So we re-surrender your calling. We're coming, we're not walking, we're running. God, we need re-surrender. So we re-surrender your calling. We're coming, we're not walking, we're running. God, we need re-surrender. So we re-surrender if you're calling. We're coming, we're not walking, we're running. God, we need re-surrender. So we re-surrender. Oh, we need re-surrender. We are your people. You are our God. We are your temple. Make us holy like you are. We are your children. God, you've set us apart. God, for your glory, make us holy like you are. We are your people. You are our God. We are your temple. Make us holy like you are. We are your children. Oh, you've set us apart. God, for your glory, make us holy like you I don't know who put the spare mints up here. <laughs> it's like a running gag. <clears throat> Y'all are such sweet people. I, and you've been so good to, to me and, and to Donnie. Someone asked Donnie, said, did you come with Brother Danny? This is the first time I've met her when I came right here. I'm so glad she's such a good addition to my list of people I can call on. Amen. <laughs> I haven't figured it out, but everybody loves her. <laughs> I, I know this is October. When does your first snow come? November? I'll oh, usually get it. February? <laughs> we all come to Tulsa. We can help you out. <laughs> there, well, I've got a couple in, in our church, and, and can I do this? I need to say hi to my wife. I hadn't done that. Shout out to Arena. Hi, sweetie. Yeah, <laughs> she's been watching. She's from Ukraine. That's a long story, and I don't have time to tell it tonight. Uh, but we have a couple in our, our church that were, uh, she had said to him, she'd said, I want you to be more of a man. So he came in one day, and he said, honey, he said, I killed a vampire, drove a stake right through his heart. She said, oh, my gosh. He said, not only that, not far behind him was a zombie, and I crushed his head, and he died. She said, oh, my gosh, honey, you're supposed to give him candy. You're not supposed to. <laughs> All right. The frivolity is behind us now. This message has... Uh, I, I had another message planned for tonight, and I even sent it to Daniel. Daniel's a miracle worker in himself. Because in, in 
the last couple of days I've said, nope, I really want to end this with a communion service with the people. I, I really want to leave having communion together. Now, there's some of you that didn't get one of these fancy little Christian hourglasses. <laughs> and if you didn't get one, raise your hand. We're going to bring you one. Here, there's some over here. One right here in the middle. Come on, guys, be harvest time before y'all get done. Let's go. I'm teasing them. I can do that because I'm gone tomorrow. Anybody else? If you see them right here's one back here, I think. Oh, you're pointing up this way. Oh, right here. I'm sorry. Oh, and there's some over here. Because I want to talk just for a little bit about the covenant God has called us into. And when I studied this thing, like everything with God, I'm just amazed. I so appreciate you young people. Y'all want to come to Tulsa? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Would you teach our young people how to worship like y'all do? Yeah. Okay. I just love you guys. Okay. I started a conversation. <laughs> but a covenant in the Bible, a covenant in the ancient world, was similar to what we today call a contract or a treaty or a will. And each covenant established the basis of the relationship. When you made a covenant, you first you established this is the relationship. Then these are the conditions for that relationship, and these are the promises in that relationship, and these are the consequences if you break the covenant. God took covenant seriously. He attached himself to his covenant for eternity, and there's several ways a covenant was sealed when they sealed that covenant. I'll just go ahead and tell you God sealed his covenant with you with the Holy Spirit. That's his seal. That's how he sealed it. Pretty good deal. But in, in one of the ways that they sealed it was with salt. In Numbers chapter 18, verse 19, it says, All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer to the Lord, I have given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an ordinance forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord with you and your descendants with you. Now, <clears throat> it says in Leviticus 2.13, you shall season your every offering of meal with salt. You shall not omit from the meal offering the salt of your covenant with God. With all of your offerings, you must offer salt. Salt did several things. Salt preserved for eternity, that covenant with God. Salt also put down evil. You'll read in the scripture where God said, when you defeat the city, when you kill all the people, salt it down so nothing grows there. And it holds back evil. And the Bible says, it shall be an everlasting covenant of salt before God and for you, and for your offspring as well. And then in Mark chapter 9, verse 49, for everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? So have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Some people I always wonder, what is the savor of salt? Can, can, you, can you see it? If you get it on your shoes, can you wipe it off? What is... What is the savor of salt? Otherwise, the Bible says it's like dirt. The savor of salt is the spirit of the salt. It is what gives it its taste. And so God says, I want you to be filled with my spirit so you'll have taste. Then there was the covenant meal. And this one really impressed me. The king, who was Yahweh's anointed might affect a lifelong treaty with the subject 
by means of a special meal. Another account of that same special meal is found in Exodus chapter 24. If you've never read it, you really need to. Because it says, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders were introduced into the very presence of the God of Israel, and they all beheld God and did eat and drink. And after the feast, Moses received the commission for the men named his priests. Let me tell you what, we're at Mount Sinai. God tells Moses, go get 70 elders and these key people and bring them up to a portion of Mount Sinai and sit them down and I want to have a meal with them. And after that meal, now someone said, nobody can see God and live. Well, you can see portions of God. You remember, they put, he put Moses in the cleft of the rock and he could just see his goodness. So what they had at the meal was the presence of God that came and sat down at that meal with him. And something really interesting happened after that meal. In Exodus 24, 18, it says, So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and Moses on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, and then brought the law down to the people. That is duplicated in the New Testament. Jesus was here 40 days. He ascended in a cloud. Then when he came back in the form of the Holy Spirit, oh, (laughs) y'all, he, on the day of Pentecost, he wrote his law in their heart. So just like Moses brought the law on tablets of stone, Jesus sent his spirit that would put the law of God written on our hearts. Now let me tell you this. If you were a Jew, there's a certain day you would celebrate. And that celebration is the day God brought Moses down and he gave the law. That's a Jewish holiday. Where, where God brought Moses down and he gave them the law. It is the exact same day as our day of Pentecost. So Moses came down from that mountain of fire and wind, and Jesus sent his spirit bringing fire and wind and wrote his law on their hearts. His law was the law of love. And he put it on their hearts. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Wrote the law in their hearts. Then there was was a meal. Then there was a blood covenant. The first blood covenant came about in Genesis chapter 15. And Abraham is there, and God is making a covenant with him. I'm going to read that story. So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two, down the middle, and placed each piece opposite of the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And When the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now listen to verse 12 through 13. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, a horror and a great darkness fell upon him. And an altar, a burning altar came down in between the carcasses. The blood was was not of bulls and goats, but by the very Son of God when Jesus came. Now, watch watch this. The two halves were symbols of God and man coming together as one. Jesus was the symbol, the sacrifice of God and man coming together as one. And it is his blood that joins us to him. Now, when did God 
take that sacrifice according to Genesis. When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon him. Listen to Matthew 27, verse 57. Now when the evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Christ. Then as they came into that covenant, there were steps of that covenant. That covenant is such a religious word, and I'm sorry, I just can't think of another one. Somebody asked me, are you Baptist? I said, yes, but not enough for it to do any harm. <laughs> in a covenant that takes place like that in the Hebrew culture, the two people coming into the covenant would exchange coats or robes. In other words, one would take his coat and put it on the other. The other would take his coat and put it on one. So they would exchange coats to make it a true covenant. Luke 23, verse 11. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. When he enters with us, watch. When he enters into this covenant with us, which is what this is about. <laughs> oh, man. He gives us his robe of righteousness. And he takes our filthy rags as sin in place. Jesus did it. When Jesus became the sacrifice, remember what happened? They took his robe and they gave him another one. He was fully part of a covenant sacrifice. Then they would take off their belt and offer it to the other person. Because in those days where they kept their knives and swords was in their belt. So by taking off their belt, they were bringing to that person coming into the covenant, peace. I bring you peace. And Jesus coming into our covenant is the Prince of Peace and what he brings us is the peace between us and God. Never again for God to do harm. They take, listen, John chapter 14, verse 27. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give. Then, after they've exchanged robes, they've exchanged belts, the sacrifice is made. Hebrews 10.10 10 says, but what will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all? He was our sacrifice once for all. That's the sacrifice that was made in the covenant. That's what this is the reminder of us to have is that sacrifice of the covenant. Then he would raise his right arm and cut the palm of his hand and clasp it with the other hand and mingle the blood and this is saying to the other person, we are becoming one with each other. And that's what Jesus said. Remember, he prayed that final prayer before going into the garden. Father, make them all one as you and I are one. That they may be able, the world might see that you sent me. You see, when you take this, you and I take this together, we are saying we want to become one with one another in our relationship through Jesus Christ. Then they would exchange names. Each one would take part of the other's name and incorporate into their own. Much like in a marriage, a woman takes the man's name so that the two become one. God says that in that covenant, he would give them part of the name. And listen to Ephesians 2.15 having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Following God followed the covenant that was set up all the way through. Then they would make a scar or some identifying mark and that scar was the outward evidence of the covenant that others could see and know that a covenant was made. There was something that I always wondered about. 
O oh, Jesus. And that is, if Jesus is the healer, why didn't he heal the holes in his own hands? Why didn't he heal the holes in his feet? When Thomas said, I, I want to know who it is, John 20, 27, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Jesus could have healed those scars, but he wanted something to show for eternity that he'd enter into a covenant with you. That's why he has the scars in his hand. That's why he has the scars in his feet. That's why he has the hole in his side. So he can say, this was the covenant I entered into. And those that put the scars in my hands are those I'm reaching for to come in to this covenant. Then they would eat the memorial meal. A loaf of bread was broken in half. Each feeds his half to the other, saying, This is my body and I'm now giving it to you. Then they take wine as a symbol of his blood and says, This is my blood, which is now your blood. From ancient times of covenant, Jesus keeping true did everything those covenants demanded so that it was pure and holy and eternal. Forever in covenant with Jesus Christ. That's what he did that day at the upper room. Broke the bread in half. They all knew what that meant. Jesus was saying, I'm coming into covenant with you. Broke the bread in half, took the cup of wine. We share the common blood, the common drink. We become one with each other. And then the two of them would go and plant a tree as a memorial to the covenant. And they would sprinkle it with the blood of the animal that was killed for the covenant offering. And that night at sundown, two men came to a wooden tree sprinkled with the blood of the sacrifice and took him down and placed him in a grave. And Acts chapter 5, verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered, by hanging on a tree sprinkled with his blood. So I got all past all that. And I thought, boy, that was old time. They were really relating to what Jesus did. But I left out something. Anybody know yet? Have you, have you figured it out yet what I left out? It was the very first thing we talked about. What about the salt? Did somebody run up to the cross with a big salt pepper shaker and go, don't think so. Didn't record it that way. And it bothered me because I knew God would bring to us a perfect covenant. And one of my trips to Israel, I found it. I found what it meant. You see, the Jewish law said you must give a man 30, 40 lashes minus one. But the Romans had no such law. Their only law was you can't beat him to death. So to keep him from bleeding to death, and I went to a mock where Jesus and the whipping post was there, and there was a big jar there. And I said, what is that jar for? He said, as the soldiers would beat and open up the back to make sure they didn't bleed to death, they took a brine of water and salt and soaked his back so the sacrifice was salted so that the blood would, would coagulate and he wouldn't bleed to death. Now here we are at his table. Who on their own is worthy to take and reinvest in this covenant. None. Paul talked about the early Christians, that, you know, those Gentiles are a partying bunch. And when they had communion, they turned it into a big meal where they all ate and drank, got drunk, and, and uh, 
You know, they praise the Lord drunk. And Paul said, y'all can't do that stuff. He said, before you come to this table, you need to examine yourselves and be sure you're in the faith, that you're taking it out of faith. That when you take this, when you have this meal together, you recognize these contents are a part of a huge covenant between you and God, and you're entering into it. Now, there are people that, that say, well, I don't feel worthy. There must be sin in my life. Well, how long do you think it takes to get forgiveness? Can I ask that? Before I pass this stuff out, you can be forgiven. Before we drink the first drop, take the first bite, you can be forgiven. So if there's anything in your life today that holds you against taking this with 100% commitment, get that forgiveness down. Let's pray right now. Father, anyone in this place that wants to receive this and there's, there's a, a problem that's kept them away from you, we accept your grace and accept your forgiveness and we stand washed clean by the blood of Jesus. We thank you. Now, here's the other part. If you're not a Christian, this has no meaning for you. In fact, the Bible says it's such a precious thing that if you take it without recognizing that this is the body of Christ, then you take condemnation upon yourself. So I'd like for everyone just to bow your head for just a moment before we take this. Everyone, if you'll help me out. I don't need any music right now. But if you're here tonight and you'd like to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and be a partaker of this, would you raise your hand wherever you are? Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Anybody else? All right. Now, those that raised your hand, we're going to pray a, a prayer. And if it's the prayer of your heart, when we end it, we want you to end it like I do. Just repeat after me when I say it. When I say in Jesus' name, everybody say it. Father, <clears throat> these folks that raised their hand knew in their heart that things weren't right with you, and they want to commit their life to Christ today. And if they come in faith, there's nothing that would stop complete forgiveness, washing them completely free, and making them a child of God, and they become one with you. And we just give you thanks for this. And you're ready? In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand for that. People coming to Christ, I think that's wonderful. Now, I'm going to encourage you to make that, that, that known to those around you. You are a Christian. You are partaking of it. Okay. I'm not sure how y'all do it. I'm just going to do it the way we do it. Is that okay? I hadn't had time to go to school on it. But I'd like you to take these elements, and I'd like you to open the end that has the bread on it. And I want you to look back, and I want you to know that this bread is the symbol of the body of Christ that was soaked in salt, planted by a tree, by a tree. For all your sins. And when you can partake this, you take the healing body of Jesus Christ. We know it's symbolic, but faith in Christ gives it its power. Are you ready, Father? We take the bread and this draws us together in you. All of us will be one tonight because we're reaffirming that faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to open the other side without spilling it. I went to the mansion in Graceland as a young man when Elvis was there. And I wanted to get in. And I couldn't get in. I was there at the gate, you know, where the guitars are and all that stuff. And the guard wouldn't let me in. And then another guy came walking in, and he let him in. I said, why would you let him in? He said, that's Elvis' uncle. It was the blood that got him in. Are you with me? Father, we partake of this 
blood of Jesus Christ that washes away all sin, that clothes us in righteousness and gives us every right to stand in the presence of a holy God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to show you one other thing. This is what, this is my parting message. Other than how much it sure is easy to love you folks. Years before there was an alphabet, they used pictures. And the Hebrew language, and I'll show you in just a moment, this word at the bottom is Yahweh in Hebrew. The pictures at the top represent the letters of Yahweh. Now watch this. The first one is Behold, now this is before the alphabet, okay? Behold, the middle symbol is the symbol of a nail. It's about to get good. And then back again we see behold. And then the last part of God's name is the right arm with a hand opened up. Behold the nail. Behold the arm. Yahweh. Yahshua. The language, even before the time of Moses, at the time of Abraham, God said, Behold the nail. Behold my right arm and hand. And it all came down to this cup. God bless you all. Thank you so much for having me come. Brother Mike. Would you bow your heads with me for just one moment, please? If you were one of those that raised your hand a while ago and you said yes to Jesus, would you come up here and stand next to me right now? Would you just stand up and come down? Stand here next to me if you said yes to Jesus a while ago. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who else? Anybody else? Just real quick. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and sing and celebrate together right now. If you need to come and make First Baptist Church Aztec your church home, this is your opportunity to do so. If you need to come and worship the King for the covenant that He has made for us, this is your opportunity to come and do that. Ms. Deborah, would you lead us, please? You came for criminals and every Pharisee you came for hypocrites even one like me you carried sin and shame
Pharisee, you came for hypocrites, even one like me. I've never been to a church like y'all. <laughs> you are wonderful, and I will miss you. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you are the salt of the earth, and may your days be brighter. May you go from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. God bless you. <laughs> You're dismissed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and don't forget, if you're going to give an offering uh, to Danny, uh, the revival, it's t it's, this is your night. This is your opportunity to do that, all right? Into the offering box with it. So thank you so much. God bless you guys. We are dismissed.